In January of this year, villagers in the remote rural north of Namibia effectively woke up to see a new local landmark. This oil drilling tower is completely new. It's a test well set up by a North American oil and gas company. Since then, it's been drilling 24 hours a day on these formerly quiet and mostly untouched lands. The test well is the first of three operated by Recon Africa, a Canadian company that has secured exploration licenses in Namibia and Botswana. For their investors, they projected the biggest global oil finds in recent history. But even though this is a very remote place, that doesn't mean it's detached from other important areas. Quite the contrary. The region's main source of water is the Kavango River, a tributary of the world-famous Okavango Delta, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Drilling for oil here is bad news for many reasons. For the indigenous San people, for the spectacular diversity of wildlife downstream, but also, it appears, for the investors themselves. There's a black gold rush going on in the world-famous Kavango Basin. Recon Africa has secured a license for more than 35,000 square kilometers of land in the region, spreading across two countries. According to the information disclosed to shareholders, the area holds significant amounts of oil and gas. Drilling began this year at two test wells in Namibia, and several more are already planned. And wish Recon Africa a great success. One, two, three. They're all located on the Namibian side, along the Omatoko River, a branch of the Okavango River. Striking oil will certainly have heavy consequences for the area. A network of rigs, pipelines, pumping stations, roads and buildings would sprawl across an environmentally sensitive, semi-arid region. It is home to Africa's largest remaining population of savanna elephants, as well as numerous threatened or endangered species. These infrastructure developments could have a substantial effect on important wildlife habitats, migratory pathways, and biodiversity in general. In order to really understand what this means, and why it matters so much, we have to take a look at this regional map. The Kavango Basin, which spans northeastern Namibia and northwestern Botswana, is part of the Kalahari Desert. In an otherwise extremely dry environment, the Okavango River is like an oasis, a lush lifeline flowing from the highlands of Angola through northern Namibia and emptying out into the Okavango Delta in northwest Botswana. It comprises a system of several national parks as well as a gigantic multi-country conservation project, the Kavango Sambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area, or CASA for short. It's the largest conservation area on the continent, with an area twice as large as the entire UK. Yet the true pearl of the region, the sapphire of the southern African crown jewels, is this pan-shaped wetland on the southeastern edge. The Okavango Delta is a unique cradle of biodiversity that pulses with life. One of the world's largest inland deltas, it's a place of untouched wilderness, attracting animals from kilometers around and creating Africa's greatest concentration of wildlife. Here, you will find everything from antelopes, leopards, hippos and crocodiles, to more unknown and outlandish species like bat-eared foxes and galago bush babies, or endangered ones like the African wild dog. The source of all this lush life is the more than two trillion gallons of pristine, ice-cold water that flows from the Angolan highlands into the delta each year. The engineers, however, the ones who keep everything in shape, are the majestic savanna elephants. They come to the so-called panhandle for water and act as a sort of landscape architect, carving channels and leaving behind a mosaic of rivers for a rich and diverse ecosystem. This creates a network of millions of small and larger islands, each with a termite colony on top and a separate microsystem surrounding it. Traveling down the path of the delta, the elephants lead, and the flood follows along the channels where new water revives old and dormant soil. Several other species depend on the elephants' activity, as their dung provides valuable nutrition, 
or even nesting material for animals like these squirrels. On the edges of the delta, the elephants start mining below the surface for edible grass roots. They cover hundreds of kilometers in search of water, constituting the largest migration in the world. And the more we move to the fringes, the better we can picture where we are and start to understand what this region would be like without its pristine waters. Here, we can experience the relentless dust and heat of the Kalahari Desert. It's a bitter fight for the last traces of water left in this harsh and merciless environment. But let's move back upstream to have a look at why Recon Africa's activity is causing such major concern and how it could affect the region. These are the areas in Namibia and Botswana that have been licensed by the Canadian Petroleum Exploration Company. There are three national parks either within, sandwiched between, or right next to these licensed areas, with elephants moving naturally between them and ultimately into the Okavango Delta. The test wells and the potentially hundreds more still to come, along with all the associated infrastructure, are located right in this area. It cuts across the elephants' paths of migration, which would severely disturb their natural movements. Elephants that are badly needed within the Delta's ecosystem. The issue that really gets alarm bells ringing is the question of how this oil will be extracted. Naturally, the contentious word fracking comes up. Hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, is a method that has turned the global fossil fuel industry upside down and made it big business again. It took some time for fracking to boom and become as widespread as it is today. But it all started off with a specific problem. How to crack open rocks deep below the Earth's surface to access trapped fossil fuel deposits? The answer is fracking. Large quantities of water, chemicals and sand are blasted into these rock formations at pressures high enough to crack them, allowing the trapped oil and gas to flow up to the surface. But it wasn't until the end of the 20th century that two key changes helped spark fracking's current boom. In the late 1990s, Mitchell Energy started experimenting with the fracking water mix to unlock gas trapped in shale. It was at the Barnett Shale Formation in North Texas that Mitchell's engineer, Nicholas Steinsberger, found the perfect mix of water, chemicals and sand. He called it slick water fracking. Slick water increased the productive potential of fracking enormously, starting an oil boom in Texas and across North America. Yet the environmental aspect of this technology makes it highly controversial. This is down to many reasons. The production chain of unlocking natural gas and crude oil through fracking involves several high-risk elements that have the potential to severely damage the environment or local ecosystems. Over a million gallons of water are needed to frack just one single well, meaning enormous consumption of this valuable resource. The chemicals used for the slick water are considered highly hazardous. They can contaminate local groundwater and waterways through inadequately built wells or contaminated wastewater stored nearby. Because it's impossible to completely control where fractures appear in the rock formation, fluids can escape through unintended fracture extensions, contaminating otherwise clean water. It's not uncommon that methane, one of the most potent greenhouse gases, escapes either on purpose or accidentally from fracking sites polluting the air and accelerating the impact of climate change. Generally, fracking in a mostly untouched region with a rich and delicate ecosystem is not a good idea. Recon Africa's intention is to open up a new deep sedimentary basin. For this, they're drilling into the 9,000 meter deep sedimentary formation of the Kavango Basin. And the main question still remains, is fracking part of the plan or not? Recon Africa's official answer to this is currently, no. We are not interested in fracking. But there are several indicators that have led to concern that they aren't definitely ruling out this controversial extraction method. Investor presentations have included such plans at several points, mostly in the small print. And even the research report commissioned by Recon Africa includes unconventional play, as it is euphemistically called on many occasions. Recon Africa has changed their wording since, crossing the term fracking out of their vocabulary. Well, it does tell us is that the word unconventional resources is no longer part of the vocabulary. Nevertheless, they apparently still base all their oil production and revenue estimates on this ominous technique. 
Another notable and relevant point that warrants a closer look is the people involved. Scott Evans, Recon Africa's CEO, has decades of technical and operational experience fracking oil in the USA while working for Halliburton. Craig Stanky was involved in several fracking activities in Spain and Mexico with his company Renaissance Oil Corp. And then Nick Steinsberger, the so-called father of fracking, remember? He's the SVP for drilling and completions. Whatever the case may be, the Namibian government reiterates that it has not given permission to frack. In fact, the government talks about only issuing an exploration license with no production license granted. By far the most serious allegations against Recon Africa came from this article in May 2021. A report leaked to National Geographic by a whistleblower alleges that Recon Africa failed to disclose crucial information about their plans to search for oil across the Kavango Basin in order to drive up stock prices. The company's value quintupled to over $1 billion over the course of this year, with stock prices skyrocketing. Everybody is an investor. I'm an investor. Everybody who's working on this project technically is also an investor. According to the same report, the company raised millions through fraudulent means, with several top executives selling their shares while Recon Africa promoted their stock through fake or invalid announcements. But how? Well, Recon Africa has never missed a chance to proclaim what an incredible business opportunity this is. They've underpinned their bold claims by reiterating that all the signs from the test wells are looking extremely promising. This naturally inflates the stock price, yes, but with only one test well fully operational and so far no seismic surveys in place, such claims do seem to be extremely far-fetched. If this and all the other information in the leaked report turns out to be true, Recon Africa's company officers would have been putting out positive news about their oil drilling plans while allegedly selling their shares and misleading investors. It's a practice known as stock scalping, basically stuffing your pockets through insider trading. All right, time for a short disclaimer. Please bear in mind that all this is considered a serious crime. All the allegations stem from a National Geographic article reporting on a leaked document of undisclosed and protected origin. None of Recon Africa's executives have been charged or convicted in any way so far. We'll post a link to the article in the description of this video so you can read it yourself. Without doubt, the consequences of oil drilling in this region could be horrendous. We mustn't forget what the real treasures of the Kavango Basin are, an ecosystem of rich and diverse wildlife, and the water that feeds it. To really understand the Okavango is to comprehend the flow and the purpose of its precious water. It nourishes one of the last strongholds of the true wilderness and everything that lives within it. Every single piece of life in this region is part of the iconic river. It's one of the very few places left on Earth where giants can roam freely, where their offspring can trust in the future of their species. It's the crown jewel of this planet, and its future is entirely in our hands. We can choose to protect it, or we can stand back and bear witness as a complex ecosystem disappears in exchange for nothing but some fast profit. So, what does this all mean? Is Recon Africa planning to drill and frack in a highly sensitive region? Or is this all just a huge scam and is such a bigger problem for the investors than the ecosystem? The answer is, we don't know. We'll have to wait and see. In the meanwhile, have a look at our channel for more super interesting videos on conservation and the environment or highly engaging and beautiful wildlife stories. Consider subscribing and turning your notifications on. We're uploading every week.